Reading with your kids. Hola, Niho, Kinichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We'll be taking you today to Washington, D.C. for an absolutely hilarious conversation with our guest. He is the author of Samantha Spinner and the Spectacular Specs. He's also a puzzle maker. He's also written Mario books. You are going to love him. His name is Russell Gens. This episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Jetley's totally interactive Magic Circus. Imagine a show where magic, illusions, comedy, music, and inspiration all come together as one. Imagine a show that has helped over one million young people and adults to change the way they approach life. A show that has shown people that being kind and respectful is fun. That show is Jetley's totally interactive Magic Circus, a transformative show that inspires young people to make healthy choices, be kind and respectful. To find out more, please visit www.jetley.com or call 617-833-7063 today. Join us on the line right now from right outside of Washington, D.C., one of my favorite parts of the world, Northern Virginia. He is the author. He's the author of so many really cool books, but we're talking today about his brand new book, Samantha Spinner and the Spectacular Specs. Please welcome to the show, Russell Gens. Russell, how are you? I'm great, and I'm glad to be here. Super, Thank you for super, inviting me. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Super. We we just had a great little conversation about about scooters and bicycles and conveyor belts, and there was a roller coaster you talked to me about. What was that roller coaster? Well, at the heart of almost every adventure in my series is a different form of transportation that somebody really thought up a while ago, but maybe doesn't ex- never never came to fruition never wound up existing or did it uh-huh. so uh in book 1 there's underground magnetic trains and uh pneumatic tubes that people travel with around the world and as far as we know uh they've never been publicly acknowledged mm-hmm. but maybe and as Samantha discovers they're really neat ways to get around so when i said about uh book 2 i said okay what are some other great transportation systems? And it turns out that uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, um, people thought that in the future, i.e. today, mm-hmm. people would be traveling on slidewalks, networks of high-speed conveyor belts. And uh, that never quite worked out. But you've been on simple versions if you've gone to the airport. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, sometimes they're called travelators. I think that was one of the names. Okay. But people had this idea in uh, the 1900s that you would get on one and it went five miles an hour and then you'd step to the side and there'd be another one going 10 miles an hour and then you'd step to the side and there'd be one going 15 miles an hour. So you would just carefully walk <laughs> you know, 20 feet to the side and you'd be going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> and it was a great idea actually, but it didn't – it never really – Showed up, uh-huh. but I, I heard about that, and that goes right into my book. So, <laughs> so to to the backtrack, each one of the books in my series, Samantha and her super annoying brother travel around the world to different countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like two or three countries per book, and I always choose a different cool way to get around. So, in book one, it was underground magnetic trains. Book two, it's all about slidewalks, and they go to Mali, Peru, and to Indonesia. Whoa, 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 very, I, I, I love it. I, and I understand Elon Musk is talking about some kind of underground two yeah, travel system yeah, in LA. Know, when I, the, the idea not for quote hyperloops, mm-hmm. now that actually was started uh, in, I think like the late 1800s. I think young, this is, it was either HG Wells, or Jules Verne started writing about it. And that idea had been drifting around and around. And then in the 1970s, the Rand Corporation, mm-hmm. uh, which you've heard of one of these big think tanks, actually did a, uh, a, a study of could we actually 
send people around the country instead of building planes and airports and, and busy roads? Could we dig tunnels under the United States and create underground jet networks? Anyways, I actually wound up reading about that when I was a kid in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And so I had these, these uh, magazine articles. One was from Popular Mechanics. One was from Omni Magazine. And uh, so when it came time to write Samantha Spinner just a little while ago, I went to that as my mode of transportation. And then apparently Elon Musk was reading the same stuff too. And I think he might actually do it. I wouldn't count it out because he actually – put those spaceships up in the air and nobody else did that. So, so I'll give him some credit. Yeah. However, I think I'd be, I got the books out in time because he hasn't done it yet. <laughs> I think, I think you might have been inspired by reading the first Samantha Spinner book. How about that? Good. Well, I, I hope he's not inspired by book two because I don't think the slidewalks <laughs> are as, are as safe as they uh, were cracked out to be. They actually tried it several times. You know, when I say they, companies uh -huh. uh, around the United States over the years have actually tried it. And I read uh, a report that they were good up to about 12 miles per hour before people started getting sick and dizzy and falling off. So, so, um, but they, they have tried over the years. Book three mm -hmm. in my series, it's all about Kogel bonds which is uh, uh, German for um, roller coaster, marble coasters. Marble coasters. Yes. All right. I can uh, – all right. I'm kind of seeing climbing in a marble and going up and down the – Absolutely. Oh, you man. Have nothing to sphere that spheres themselves. <laughs> However, that's book three. That's book three. We're talking about book two today. All right. And then – well, I, I'm just amazed. You know, one of the things we're talking about, and and I think it would be a really neat thing to talk about with our kids as we're reading Samantha Spinner, is the fact that that we're living in the future. We're living in someone's future. And, Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I don't think kids kind of connect with that. I, mean, I certainly never imagined that. It, it, you know, we, we, we had this idea that one time that we could walk around with a, uh, something that we could make phone calls on. Uh, but we never, I never thought that, that we could call different countries and make videos and send videos and, and do more with this little thing in our pockets than we can do with a, a typical laptop, but that, that reality is here. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, if you go back and watch science fiction from not too long ago, Star Trek, mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff in Star Wars, what we have now is better. I know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, uh, what's really amazing, I don't know if you've watched The Incredibles lately, but every uh, Apple, Steve Jobs, they just took all their ideas right out of The Incredibles. <laughs> they're using iPads, they're using iPhones, they're all that stuff. So, so um, like uh, like them, like like myself, I'm always getting ideas from stuff that other people have been working on forever. One of the things. Uh, and I will let you ask me about the actual book. But one of the things that I, I do, I collect um, old magazines from the 30s and the 40s uh, called uh, – uh, oh, goodness gracious. I can't think of it, but they're, they're popular inventions, mm -hmm. not, not – popular or popular science but there were a bunch of these great ones mm -hmm. where they would show all these things that somebody somewhere was working on and 90 percent of them either shouldn't have been working on <laughs> and uh, or they just never quite worked out so people were inventing special cigarettes that you could throw out your car window and they'd extinguish or uh you know which is not a good idea no. and uh you know Things like that, like streamlined bags of garbage so you could throw them out of your car and they would fall farther, you know, like uh, – but but there were also these amazing vehicles, mm -hmm. you know. We're still waiting on those flying cars and jetpacks and gliding boats and mm -hmm. uh, so those are wonderful. If, if you're a writer, go back and look at that stuff and you've got half your half your work is already done. Well, you know, that, that's true. I mean, I, I think a lot of times people sit down and, 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 and I think kids too, they get frustrated when they're, when they're challenged with, with coming up with something creative. Uh, you know, they, they think they need to start from scratch and, and just start building on nothing. And the reality is that we can, I mean, everybody borrows from somebody else and you've done, 
such a marvelous job with your books, but going in the past and seeing what folks tinkered with in the past and then just bring it into the modern day and, and, and just have so much fun with it. Absolutely. Um, I see my books as just a gateway to lots of people's ideas. So somebody, I, I, I visit lots of schools, uh, mm-hmm. that when I'm not writing, I'm out, uh, uh, visiting fourth, fourth graders, fifth graders, third graders, and talking about my books and talking about writing. And one of the questions just today, somebody asked me, and it was the first time somebody said, you know, in three words, what's your book? And that was tough. I had to think about it for a second. Mm-hmm. And I came up with, if I had to tell you what my book was in three words, it would be secret elevator button. You know, there's, there's secret buttons everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's secret doors everywhere. And so once you got that, okay, walk around. What have people built? And this was the, this was the genesis of, of Samantha Spinner before I even had Samantha Spinner. The idea was what if there were secret passageways everywhere and secret doors that could take you to other countries, uh, quickly or clumsily or in unusual <laughs> ways? And then I made up Samantha and her super annoying brother as you and me and how you would experience, you know, taking a, a pneumatic tube to Paris or going down a water slide and winding up in Mexico City. And, uh, and, but, but the, but the basic premise is what if all these things have been built and you just have to take a closer look and notice that, that, that the buttons and the doors are there? That's, uh, uh talk about, talk about feeding a kid's imagination. I, I, I'm just imagining myself back in fourth grade. And, and I don't think I could have been clever enough to come up with that question of, of describing your book in three words. That's, that's pretty good for a fourth of his yeah. grade. Oh yeah. I get, I get all those questions and I'm, I'm getting better because I've done this. I've been to about a hundred schools now. Uh-huh. So only rarely do I get a question that completely catches me flat footed. You know, so I've been through the, how old are you? Oh. I get that one. And now I say, <laughs> I'm 198 in dog years. Uh-huh. And then all the kids are calculating as if there was some formula, but I just made up a number. Uh-huh. I, don't, I don't know what dog years is. <laughs> and uh, I always get, um, how, how much money do you make? Uh-huh. And I get, and I say, $2.4 billion. And next question. And, uh, <laughs> but most of the questions are really great mm-hmm. and uh, really thoughtful. And I'm doing product research because Half uh, everything I get asked, uh, I would say one out of every 20 times I say, wow, that's a really great question. That's going right in the next book. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so because uh, one of the subplots in, in the Samantha Spinner book series is that the um, older sister who received a check for two point four billion dollars and is now out on a shopping spree. Well, one she keeps writing home on her epic quest to purchase uh, a pair of unicorns and um it's 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 a subplot and it's going to continue through the entire series that uh anyways so i i talk about this with the kids and, and a couple months ago a, a girl or a boy i don't remember raised her hand his hand and said um mr gins when buffy spinner buys her unicorns finally what's she going to name them <laughs> and i said that's an excellent question and uh I didn't make her sign a release form, uh-huh. but the next, the very next thing I did, the chapter opens up with the, the family's been riding in a car for 11 hours, listening to Buffy rattle off all the possible names. So the first <laughs> line in the chapter is, Oh mother, don't you know anything? Nobody names unicorns with adjectives anymore. And, uh, so uh, I get tons of ideas, uh, visiting with kids. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I, I, I'm at the age right now, Russell, when I'm in a school and a kid asks me how old I am, I just own up to it and they all sit there going, oh my goodness, and you're able to walk around on your own. That's amazing. Oh, no. This is, <laughs> see, because I do a big presentation with music and jumping around and puzzles uh-huh. and games. And early on in this process, you know, I've been doing this for a couple of years now since uh, the first Samantha Spinner book came out. And I realized the irrefutable truth that most fourth graders cannot tell the difference between someone who is 23 and someone who is 53. (laughs) And armed with that, I go forth 
<laughs> well, this, young man's game. this is wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm real excited. And, you know, we've been talking now for almost 15 minutes and we haven't, we, we know that Samantha yep. Spinner and the spectacular specs, we, we're going to meet Samantha and we're going to meet her. Well, we're not going to meet her. We're going to know about her sister looking out for, for unicorns and, and her amazingly annoying brother. But we don't know a, a know. little plot line about the spe- spectacular specs. Yes, my publishers we should be screaming right now. <laughs> Mention the book. Mention the actual book. Um, see, I, 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 I failed uh, PR 101 today. However, let me tell you, this is what happened. Samantha's uncle disappeared. And he, le- he left behind presents for his nieces and his nephews. So Samantha's older sister got a check for $2.4 billion. And that came with a note that said, have fun shopping. <laughs> and Samantha's younger brother, he got the deed to Yankee Stadium and all the players' contracts. So he's the new owner of the New York Yankees. And that came with a note that said, don't miss opening day. Mm-hmm. And Samantha, she gets... An old rusty umbrella with a hole in it and a note that says, watch out for the rain. So if you read my book, you'll notice that the title of chapter two is, it wasn't fair. And it doesn't seem fair for several pages. But then at some point, they look at the inside of that umbrella with a magnifying glass and they notice that the lining is covered with drawings and blueprints and diagrams and instructions and charts. And the umbrella is the super secret plans to finding hidden doorways and passageways and buttons that take you all around the world. And that is the Samantha Spinner story. That is spectacular. And talk about a great gift. So much better than a check for $2.4 billion and being a Bostonian. So much better than owning the Yankees. But Yes. <laughs> well, so one thing, the sister quickly blows all that money trying to make a movie and then a Broadway play. And the... the um. Uh, uh, over the course of, of the first book in the series, a uh, sinister ancient Egyptian curse befalls the owner of the Yankees, and they begin to lose and lose. So by the end of book one, the Yankees have lost 24 games in a row. Oh. By the end of book two, they've lost 100 games in a row. Um, uh, book three, they're at the critical 149 uh, games in a row because according to um, rule 1313 of the playbook, if any major league team loses 150 games in a row, they're kicked out of the league. And so we're up to that point. And part of this is is inspired by my theory that this will boost book sales in the Boston <laughs> metropolitan <Absolutely>. area. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm making my order right now. I, I don't know if you can hear me typing in the background, but <laughs> I, I love this. And I think that, you know, it, the fact that we, it took us 15 minutes to talk about the book, you, we're, we're getting to know you and getting to know your, your, your sense of humor and your, what, what makes you tick and what makes you excited. And that is certainly everything we're going to be finding inside the book. And that's as, Great an advertisement for Samantha Spinner as the story itself, because I, I think that there's a lot of your personality in Samantha and in these books. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, uh, the, these books, like some of the really great books, I always tell people how much I love the book Holes by Louis Sacker because it's such a complicated book that goes forward and back in time and it's a lot of fun and it's so much fun you don't even notice that it's about really serious things and real problems that re- real people have and that's why it's such a great book and and what I'm trying to do here I'm not saying my book is that good but um, what I'm trying to do is create something that's really silly and ridiculous and playful and, and engaging so you don't even notice that it's really a book series about exploring the world and not being afraid of people who don't look just like you and that there are just a whole lot of cool things to learn about around the world. And and that's really what I'm trying to get across. And that's a great lesson. And I think, you know, we're, uh, you know, I know that there are fourth and fifth graders out there that are just devouring Samantha Spinner on their own. And I imagine it's, you know, on the bus ride to school and at night at home. But I think that these would be great books for families to experience together. Maybe not reading aloud together, although I think that they'd be a lot of fun to read aloud together. But definitely something that these are books that I think families would have a great time talking about on the way 
to soccer practice or to dance lessons or, or back home from school and, and, and just kind of challenge each other to find those secret hidden buttons in their own neighborhoods. Yes. And that is in fact where I got the idea when I, I, I don't remember. I think I might have been in fourth grade. My parents took me to see a play in a theater and I was a little bored and it was one of those really great, you know, pal- theater palaces of, of yesteryear. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at all the panels and all the, the shapes and the ceilings and the walls. And I was thinking, what do those do? Is there, a, <laughs> is there a tunnel there? You know, so there's so many great places. So I, I, uh, wherever I go someplace, whether it's, um, New Jersey and you look at Lucy the Elephant. Which clearly, you know, the building Lucy the Elephant I'm, and Margaret. Oh, there's there's an elephant shaped building in New Jersey that everyone should know about. But you wonder where does that trunk go? Is there a tunnel down there? And uh, or or um, the Library of Congress mm-hmm. in Washington D.C. It's got all these shapes and and patterns. One of them has to be a secret tunnel. There's no question. And uh, you know, if you um, read, uh, I, I don't want to give away too much, but we discover at some point in my uh, in my adventure series that the St. Louis Arch is an oval. Ah, okay. Okay, so it goes somewhere in the other direction too. All so, right, all right. Okay, I could go on. I, I could go on forever. But the other thing that that um, I don't know if you've had a chance to explore is that I filled my books with secret puzzles. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, there's always in every book at least like four or five puzzles that you can, once you read the book, you can go back and you can put certain um, titles of the chapters, one on top of each other, and they form a word search mm. that you can solve. And there's one character who's really rotten. And whenever she is on a page, there's numbers along the bottom of the page and those numbers can be decoded to send you to a website and that website tells you never read Samantha Spinner. It's the worst book series of all time. And <laughs> it's sort of the anti the anti website. And uh, just lots of puzzles and games like that. So um uh I'm trying in addition to it being a, a book series, it's sort of a mini escape room hidden inside a book series too. Yeah, and that's really popular. That's something that my daughter right now who is twenty three and amazing is just she just loves creating puzzles and those secret escape rooms and she does such a great job of it and talk about a lot of family fun to read the books and then to go back together and to work on these different puzzles together yeah so um yeah a- absolutely and then so I'm, I'm sort of walking the line between I, I, I think everyone in publishing is looking at doing things like that but I like to think I'm I'm at the at the what's the vanguard uh-huh. is that every every chance I get I throw you to a fun website. I've made dozens of fake websites to go along with these books. So there's chinchillasdirect.com. Uh, so in the spectacular specs uh at the beginning of the book, Samantha's brother decides he's going to do something nice for his sister and he orders her a pet chinchilla as a present. But um, Nipper Spinner doesn't pay close. He doesn't pay attention to the details, and he accidentally orders her one gross of chinchillas. And a gross is one dozen dozen. Uh-huh. So throughout the first half of the book, um, every every day a, a new box arrives with one dozen chinchillas, <laughs> and it's fully filling with the house. And so to accompany that, he orders them from Chinchillas Direct. So I I uh, created a website, Chinchillas Direct. That, uh, but of course, if you go there, their ordering system is 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 not is not active. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but but so I so I've got Chinchillas Direct. I've got um, Pain Du Jour, the fake bread company that chases them around Paris. Mm-hmm. I have uh, Tours Du Jour, which is the fake tourist company. So there's about at this point, I think I'm up to eleven fake websites that if you read the book and solve the puzzles they'll send you to just for fun yeah yeah well this is fantastic i just i love this and you have a background as a game and a puzzle designer and that that just i I just love how all these these things all these interests in your life are coming together yes this is my chance to finally force you guys to listen to my songs and do those puzzles (laughs) And I also want to mention the fact that you th- these these aren't your first they're the, the first two books in the Samantha Spinner series, but you've also been writing you've written five Mario Brother books. 
Yeah, those were early on when I just was getting started. Uh, they were a series, it was called the Nintendo Adventure Book Series, and they're choose your own adventure books. And, uh, I had to come up with well over 100 ways to kill the Mario Brothers. <laughs> you know, it was easy to, cause, cause you know, there's those things, I, I actually don't really want to write one of those ever again because I, I like just telling stories uh-huh. and those you have to tell eight stories and then eight stories and then eight stories mm-hmm. to tell one story mm-hmm. because everything branches and you definitely get to a point where it's like, no, I don't want to think about two things that are going to happen. I just want to come up with the best thing that's going to happen. So they're really exhausting. Uh-huh. However, I did uh, tough it out. I wrote five uh, books under the pen name Clyde Bosco. And they're the adventures of the Mario Brothers. And like I said, you know, the first couple pages, because they're all these game over pages. And, uh, the fir- you know, first they get eaten by Bowser Koopa or they get smashed by the, the Turtle Brothers. But really soon, you know, you have to come up with new ways to destroy the Mario Brothers. So I have them turned into sandwiches and eaten. I have them uh, turned into apples and have them peeled. And it's just like as it gets more surreal Mm-hmm. As the as the adventure series goes on, because I have to come up with yet another way to destroy the Mario Brothers and have it say game over. So they get blown up into balloons and then a little kid pops them with a pin. They get pinched, pinched to death by giant crabs for no apparent reason. Uh, you know, a- a- anyway, so those those are great. But um, I did. Lo- this is my first book series mm-hmm. and it's, it's so much fun because you get to make characters and then the characters come back again. And I just, I'm so in love with Samantha and Nipper They're there because they, they both love each other and hate each other. Mm-hmm. And it's just so much, they're, they're just so much fun. This is the first time I've ever uh, written books where the characters come back again. Uh-huh. And, and I tell people, I wrote the first book, Samantha Spinner, these new books, The Spectacular Specs, and now The Boy in the Ball, which is book three. Well, Samantha and Nipper are writing those books. I'm just trying to get it down. <laughs> and, and that's just such a joy. Yeah. It's such a joy. Well, you can tell, you, you can tell that these, that these, this is a real passion that, that, that you really do love the books and you love the characters. I can hear it in your voice. I can see it in your eyes. And I know the folks can read it on the, on the pages too. You've told us that you've created at least 11 different fake websites, but you, you also have a real website. Yeah. So we want folks to go to the well, real what website. A, what a failure I would be if I can <laughs> tell you guys to go to samanthaspinner.com. And there you can hear all the Samantha Spinner songs. You can hear other songs that I've written. There's a whole bunch of games I've been making uh, to go along with Samantha Spinner. Fun, just fun stuff to play. So in book two, in the spectacular specs, the kids are always playing this game called Word Whammy. And that sort of works its way into the story. And so I made a game called Word Whammy that you can print out and play. It's a card game. And uh, I put that on SamanthaSpinner.com. And then I also put a sort of a around the world or world, wor- I can't even say it, <laughs> world wheel, a trivia game. And it's sort of this big spinner wheel and it asks you questions. And I, and I hope you guys check all that out. It's, it's all just fun and free. And from there you can go, like, like I mentioned, from there you can launch onto ChinchillasDirect.com and uh, uh, Bijou Du Jour, the company that makes fake diamonds. And, uh, things like that. But, but again, SamanthaSpinner.com is the starting point for all these adventures. And of course, where you find the theme song. Awesome stuff. Well, we're really excited. I had, I had such a blast. And the only reason I'm ready to say goodbye is because I need to run out and get my own copy of Samantha Spinner and the spectacular specs. I need to read about the Yankees losing all those games in a row. What a dream that would be for me. <laughs> We've had so much fun tonight talking to the author of Samantha Specs, Samantha Spinner and the Spectacular Specs, Russell Gins. Russell, thank you so much for being part of our show. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Paolo Mazzucato. He is the author of No One Mocks a Panda. You do not want to miss this episode of the show. In fact, I think if you haven't already done so, you should run right now. Go over to the iHeartRadio app, subscribe to the show on the iHeart app or at iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, Himalaya. Wherever you find your podcast, you should subscribe to the show. 
And if you find your podcast on a bunch of different apps, subscribe to, to us on all of them. We don't want you to miss a single minute. Hey, we want to thank Russell Gins for joining us today. Make sure you check out his great book, Samantha Spinner and the Spectacular Specs. We want to thank my producer, Fatima Khan, for all the wonderful work that she does. Don't miss her blog over at readingwithyourkids.com. We also want to thank my beautiful wife for all of her support. And, of course, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.